Ready? Time having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order, and I ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we open each regular school committee meeting with uh, hearing of visitors, which is an opportunity for members of the public to address the mayor, the superintendent, and the school committee on any issues that they would like to bring before us. We take those issues under advisement. Uh, however, no one has signed in for this meeting, so no one has requested to be heard. So we'll move right on to the next item. Uh, this is our organizational meeting, the first meeting of each year. Uh, the school committee reorganizes for the new year. And so we'll have a kind of a lot of parliamentary procedural stuff here for the first uh, part of the meeting. So the first order of business is the election of the secretary of the school committee for the upcoming year. And traditionally, that is the superintendent. But I'll, uh, I'll uh, take a motion. And Kathleen Smith to be the secretary of the Brockton School Committee. Okay. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Looks like you're it again. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll take that as a vote of confidence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our, next, uh, our next item is traditionally uh, we uh, recognize the outgoing vice chair. So for those that aren't familiar with the format of the school committee, the mayor sits as the chair of the school committee. Uh, the s members of the school committee elect a vice chair each year who not only would sit in uh, for the mayor when the mayor's not here as the chair, but more importantly, I think the vice chair does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. We have several committees of the whole that are very important, like finance and policy, um, curriculum that are committees of the whole and the mayor does not sit on those committees the vice chair chairs those committees and that's where um, really a lot of the real work is is done that uh, isn't televised and the public doesn't see and the vice chair also does a lot of babysitting and um, negotiating and, and uh, a lot of other stuff to keep the business of the school committee moving forward so uh, it's a very Right, refereeing, <laughs> although we have less refereeing than we used to a few years ago. Um, <laughs> but in any event, it's a very critical role. And so uh, each year at this time, we like to uh, recognize uh, the outgoing vice chair. And over the last few years, we've saved money on plaques because we just keep tacking another year on to the old plaque. Uh, so anyhow, at this time, we'd like to call the vice chair, Mr. Minicello, up. Uh, to be presented with this plaque by the superintendent and I. And we're going to button my coat for this time. I don't know if we have anyone to take the picture. Oh, you know what? I have a... Sal, they're going to take a picture? Okay. All right. Yeah, can we just use yeah. last year's? Yeah. Recycle it. Tom looks a little younger in last year's just picture. Recycle it. Yeah. Do you want to say, make any remarks, superintendent? Yes. Okay. I want to thank uh, Tom Minicello again for serving in the critical role uh, as chair. I, I know we've joked about what this year has been for all of us. It's been a commitment on all of our school committee members. Uh, Mr. Minicello is certainly always available you know, for discussions, for supporting every one of us, uh, and I really appreciate the work that you do. So thank you on behalf of all of us. Pleasure is mine. All right. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations on another successful year. That's for you. Let's make sure we get a picture with all of us. Got it? There we go. Beautiful. Take these glasses off. I can clap. Can see Tom really packed yeah. him in here tonight, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get his wife to come. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I guess I should go on to the next order of business. Uh, so next on the agenda uh, is the election of the vice chair for the upcoming uh, year. 
So uh, this is, I'll take a nomination from the floor, Mrs. Joyce. Well, given the budget constraints of this year, I think we should save money on the plaque again. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> as a result, I'd like to nominate Mr. Minicello to serve as vice chair for this coming year. Okay. <laughs> nomination has been made and properly seconded. Uh, all in favor of Mr. Minicello as vice chair? Unanimous vote. And he does a great job, too. That's very nice to say. Right, so, Tom, you're on again. Um, it, well, working and serving with the school committee is a pleasure. Uh, we do work well together. Um, we all put in the necessary time, and um, I can't say enough about my colleagues. It is um, a pleasure to be your vice chair, and um, I appreciate the faith that you have in me. Um, I'm not sure if it's a blessing or it's a curse, but uh, yeah. thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> either way, I will try to do my best in light of the issues that we will be facing. And you know, it just seems like it's not getting easier every year. It seems to be getting uh, there are more obstacles and hurdles to deal with. And we'll do our best, like we always do. And I think that you know we all have the same philosophy: if you put the kids first. Uh, the decisions are a lot easier to make and you know what usually is the right thing usually happens when you prioritize in that way so we all share that I think same philosophy and again uh, it's a pleasure to work with all of you thank you all right, Tom, again, there's no truth to the rumor that five other school committee members turned it down before we selected Tom again um, but I, I want to personally thank Tom so I I came on the school committee five years ago, and uh, that was the year I think Tim Sullivan and I came on as the two new members that year. And my very first day serving the school committee, my very first meeting was when we originally elected Tom as the vice chair, and here we are five years later, and Tom's still getting elected as the vice chair. So I think that speaks to the fact of what a great job he does, and besides the time he puts in and the intelligence and everything, ability that he brings to the job, Tom's got the perfect demeanor for it. And that's probably why I was never elected vice chair during my four years on the school committee because, you know, Tom is very even keeled. And no matter what the issue is, he's fair with everybody, he listens to everybody. And I think even the superintendent would say he's a, he's a great go-between between, between the superintendent and the school committee and being able to communicate well between the committee and the superintendent because quite often Tom, you know, when we're not in session, is speaking for the committee when he's speaking to the superintendent. So. Tom, congratulations. We look forward to working with you again this year. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now, uh, the next uh, item of business we have to take care of is we select two, Tom, two members, right? Two members of the school committee to serve as representatives to the community school advisory board. This is a role that's very important to the superintendent. Um, so. We're going to ask for, do we do both at the same time, or one at each, or? Yeah. Do, so do we have two in mind that would like to serve, or? I'd like to nominate Ozzy. Okay, so Mr. Jordan's name has been placed in nomination. Okay, so, and uh, has been properly seconded. So all in favor of uh, Mr. Jordan uh, being one of our designees to the Community Schools Advisory Board. <laughs> all in favor? So, Mr. Jordan, you're on board, and now uh, we still need a second nomination for a second member to serve. I can go ahead, and if it's okay, I'll do it again. Okay. I, I think we should have someone else nominate you. But if I'll someone nominate. else wants yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to nominate you. Okay. Uh, Judy Sullivan has been uh, properly uh, nominated and seconded. All in favor of uh, Mr. Sullivan? Very good. So our representatives this year to Community Schools Advisory Board will be Mr. Jordan and Mrs. Sullivan. And thank you both for agreeing to, to serve. Okay. Now, in everybody's packet, they have the uh, copy of the uh, rules and orders of the school committee. Um, I don't think, did we change anything in it this year? I don't think so. No. So this is the same rules and orders that we operated under last year. Uh, I think we very rarely actually refer to these. 
The only time if we dig them out, that means we've got an issue. Uh, but I don't think we've had to look at them much in the last couple of years, so uh, that's been nice. So we do need to each year, however, adopt the rules and orders of the school committee. So uh, everyone has a copy in their packet, unless anyone wants to uh, suggest any changes, I'll accept a motion. Orders of the Brockton School Committee as presented. Second. Okay, motion has been made and properly seconded to approve the rules and orders of the school committee as included in everyone's packet. All in favor? Opposed? That passes unanimously. Now, in everyone's packet, they should also have the proposed appointments to the various uh, subcommittees. These are actually the appointments of the mayor, but I will tell you that these were, these appointments were made basically with, uh, um, with the suggestions of the superintendent and the vice chair and reflecting requests of individual members that may have asked to serve on a specific committee. We have made one small change, so there is a page that everyone should have and this should be substituted for the page and in the highlight You'll see we did make a change on the security, safety, and transportation subcommittee. That will be, it's proposed that that would be chaired by Mrs. Joyce with uh, Ozzie Jordan and Judy Sullivan to also serve on that subcommittee. So that's the only change from all of the assignments that everyone's had in their books. And uh, unless anyone would like to propose any amendments, I'll entertain a motion on these. Subcommittee appointments. Okay. Motion has been made and properly seconded to adopt the subcommittee assignments as included in everyone's booklet and with this one amendment that everyone has in front of them. All in favor? Opposed? That's adopted unanimously. Yeah, um, I think all of the members know if there is a um, subcommittee meeting that anyone has an interest in attending. Um, you know, school committee members can certainly attend and um, participate. With respect to a vote of the subcommittee, any additional members um, cannot vote, but can certainly voice their opinions um, because then the work of the subcommittee goes to the full committee where the committee as a whole will have the final say and vote on the work that's being done in the subcommittee. But um, we've seen on many occasions where members show up to different subcommittees where they have an interest and certainly voice their opinions and provide suggestions and provide assistance with respect to the work that's being done on a particular subcommittee. The, the one in particular that was just pointed out, uh, a lot of members obviously weigh in with respect to safety, security, and transportation because it affects the district as a whole. So. Um, any member that wants to a attend certainly can and weigh in. Mrs. Joyce has been a great uh, chair of that subcommittee and you know runs it well. But we've certainly had visitors and other members show up to some of her meetings and weigh in on certain issues, especially dealing with se uh, security and transportation. So, I think in recent years we've made it a point to have one uh, let the entire committee know about the scheduling of subcommittee meetings, oh, yeah. so everyone knows when all the subcommittees are. You don't have to be serving on it to attend, and um, I mean, it's it's if there's something of interest, you absolutely should go. And as Tom said, you can be recognized, you can have input, you can fully participate. You just don't actually have a vote when it's time to, to vote on anything. I think we've a number of us have done that over the years pretty pretty regularly. It's also a great way to be informed on items before they come up to the full school committee. You've already you know we've already been involved in it, so. Uh, that's a great point, Tom, and I think we've had some great participation in the subcommittees. All right, moving it along. Uh, the consent agenda is the manner in which the school committee conducts routine uh, pieces of business uh, by voting on a number of items as one block to expedite the timing of the, uh, the full school committee meeting. However, before we vote on the consent agenda, any member of the school committee may request that any individual item be removed from the consent agenda for individual consideration. So at this time, everyone has a copy of the consent agenda. And uh, are there any items that a member would like to have removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda as a whole. Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. 
Motion's been made and properly seconded to adopt the consent agenda. All in favor? Opposed? That is adopted unanimously. And I think most of my heavy lifting is done now, Superintendent. And I'll turn it over to you for the uh, Superintendent's okay. Report on Learning and Teaching. Thank you very much and Happy New Year to everybody uh, 2015. I uh, will start with uh, Jessica Freeborn, our student representative who looks nice and warm over in that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I am proud to report that before our holiday break, um, 200 gifts were collected, um, these being mostly toys and winter clothing um, for the Salvation Army. This fundraiser was led by the senior class, so a great job to the senior class and thank you for everyone who donated. Um, let's see. Today a presentation was given to two health classes about the dangers of texting and driving. That was a, I heard it was a great presentation and the students really learned a lot and liked it. Next week on Wednesday, January 14th, access testing will be going on for all English language learners. This will be happening periods one, two, three, and half of four. Half of fourth, um, students taking the test will um, have an early release. And next Friday, January 16th, the National History Day competition will be held from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the Azure cafeteria. So good luck to all those who will be competing. And Let's see, term two ends January 28th. How fast has the year been going? That's crazy. And report cards for ter term two will be coming out early February. I do not have an exact date yet, so, yeah. <coughs> Let's see. Just, oh, sorry, so, okay. so I, I just wanted to thank the superintendent and acknowledge that the, um, the special presentation we had on the distracted driving, I think this, with all the events we've been through for the past year with um, pedestrian and bicyclist safety and so many tragedies we've had that the, you know, the superintendent and I have committed to work together on the educational component. And uh, I think it's great that we're able to run that program today. We've certainly identified both distracted drivers and distracted pedestrians as being really huge contributing factors to a lot of these uh, tragic accidents, so having the chance to have that presentation to a lot of our young drivers here at the high school today is very much appreciated. It was, it was excellent. I actually uh, came for the one o'clock uh, sitting. Um, we probably had over 200 youngsters from the health classes. I want to thank Nick Lee and his group for, for orchestrating that. The teachers were here with the youngsters. Um, the fellow that presented, and I'm forgetting his name, this is terrible, I have his card in my bag, but he had come from Philadelphia, and he was a dad who lost his 21-year-old daughter uh, to a driver who was a distracted driver. Um, the presentation was interactive with the kids. Attorney um, Joel Feldman. Thank you, Attorney Joel Feldman, and I believe his daughter's name was Casey. Not only was Attorney <coughs> Joel Feldman here, he also had his wife here with him, um, it was very, very powerful. It was brought here by Representative Claire Cronin, I th think through the mass trial attorneys who represent a lot of people in these cases and want to make sure, as the mayor said, this is something as a community that, that we're obviously dealing with you know, pedestrian accidents. Um, many things are happening on our streets that we are very, very concerned about. The, the one thing that the attorney spoke to me about afterwards was he could not believe, again, the responses from the kids, the interactions. And it wasn't just about telling kids what to do. I think that was the best part of the presentation. It was all about what all of us can do. It was about adults. You know, I left here thinking, again, about my own driving. Um, I happened to have Bluetooth in my car and really thought that that was something you know, that w it was hands-free and, and it was okay if you did that. And there's, you know, research that has shown that that is a part of distracted driving. So we all have choices to make. It truly affects a lot of families. Uh, it was a great step, not only for our kids, but to go home and talk to mom and dad and brothers and sisters. And I think it left a lasting impression. We will continue to uh, work with Attorney Feldman. He was very interested to hear what kinds of initiatives, you know, are going on in our city and our high school. But as always, when people come here to present to our kids, they talk about how wonderful our kids are and how respectful they are, how involved they were in this particular presentation. And I know that uh, Sharon Wolder, as principal, is very, very careful of putting together large groups of kids in our auditorium. You know, sometimes you really miss the message. And I think today's setting, sitting here, 
with about 100 youngsters was, was very, very different. Um, and I can certainly understand as we look to, I know a number of you have talked to me about presentations. And I think this was certainly a good start and something that we can build on uh, in looking to, to support our kids in the choices that they make. So I also want to, to commend the presentation today. And uh, also, I will tell you for a, a first, the mayor and I have been continuing to talk about the strategic plan. I've talked about it since the day I interviewed. We talked about the diversity of our teaching force here in the Brockton Public Schools. And when we talk about that, I like to talk about more of the grow your own model, looking at our students here at Brockton High School. And certainly by virtue of the numbers, I think we'll start to see uh, the diversity in our teaching force and, and in our staff. Uh, here in the Brockton Public School. So today's meeting was just phenomenal. We had uh, the Chancellor from UMass Boston, uh, Keith Motley, Dr. Motley. We had uh, Dr. Charles Wall there from Massasoit. We had representatives from uh, Dr. Clark and Dr. Dana Molafario at Bridgewater State. We had representatives from uh, UMass Dartmouth. Um, we had our Human Resource Office present and not only did we have a lengthy discussion about starting again our kids at a very early age and looking at as we've talked about our middle school youngsters future teacher clubs and really choosing to go into the teaching profession and making sure that those kids that are making those choices have opportunities with also our community members you know working with some of the churches some of our community members you know to encourage kids to look towards teaching as a profession to make sure when we have jobs in the summer that the priority are these cohort of students that come through our school system, supporting them through two-year programs, through a four-year program, talking about even taking the teacher test, the licensure, uh, working with our Brockton Education Association, and making sure that this is something that we commit to. And we have all kinds of little things happening around, but this is actually going to, we have a meeting that is scheduled within a month. It's going to uh, be a working group. There'll be about 12 people in the working group that will uh, actually um, come and present to the group that we had today. So the superintendent, the uh, presidents of the colleges won't necessarily be part of the working group. We'll have representatives there, but we'll continue to get updates along with the mayor had uh, Bob Buckley representing uh, him on this, this meeting today. So I thought they, they were excited when they left there. They said it was the first time that they had actually attended a meeting like this where they had real faith that something was gonna happen. And of course the talk was about what's going to come to downtown Brockton in the next few years. So when you have these campuses working together and you're starting to work with these cohorts of you know, young future teachers you know, coming through our pipeline, I think we'll start to do something very good for our community to, to support our students. Well, I'm very excited about it too. I think you know, the, the, the fact that we have four local colleges and universities that are all committed to working with us, they're affordable state schools, and I think on our end, if we can commit to really um, uh, developing and promoting uh, public school teaching as a career path and as a choice, starting with kids when they're in middle school, that a lot of them will choose to go this route. I've always believed very strongly in us trying to develop our own teachers. Um, I think it can, it'll be the long-term solution to the issue of diversity of the faculty because I don't know what better way we can get the faculty to represent the community uh, if we're hiring teachers from the community and developing teachers from the community. But at my experience having six kids in the schools over the years, um, I, a, anytime they ever had a teacher who grew up in Brockton, they, they always had a great relationship with the teacher and I can't explain it scientifically, but there is a dynamic between children growing up in the city who identify with teachers who also grew up in the city and uh, I can honestly say I never ever had a nothing but great experiences when my children had teachers who were Brockton natives, whether they still lived here or not today, but if they grew up in the city. So um, Mr. Thomas comes to mind. He would fit that description. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm very excited and I appreciate, I think this is something else that the, uh, the school system and the colleges and the superintendent and I are all gonna be able to work together on and really I think develop a, a long-term strategy that will create opportunities for, for young people growing up here in the city. And I, I think Dr. Motley said it best when he told me, and uh, those of you, I'm not sure if you know, Dr. Motley is a giant of a man. And when he speaks, you kind of listen. And he told me that this is something going forward that I should just be demanding. 
So it's not usually a word that I use. I loved it because I think it's that important to all of us. So I think we, we can demand that this happen. We can work with the community, with businesses, and actually have an action plan to present to you as we go forward. So it's very exciting. Absolutely. Um, I also want to update you um, on the charter school rebuttal. I will tell you uh, it wasn't much of a vacation for, for people, certainly on the executive team. Um, our, every one of our groups took a look um, at that application, and when I left you, that's what we were doing. The application on its merits, which it is being heard, we had until uh, January 5th to actually uh, submit the rebuttal. Um, the Office of Teaching and Learning uh, looked at it, our bilingual department, our special education department, um, our Office of Business and Finance, all of the things and how they approve a charter school, we made sure we looked at all of those particular standards and areas and looked at it on its merits. Uh, we submitted, I think it's about a 17-page uh, rebuttal. I think it was an excellent rebuttal, excellent work uh, by your executive team. Uh, it was put, sent in in a timely manner. It was signed by uh, Mr. Minicello as vice chair, the mayor, and myself. I know each of you, it has been sent to you today. We will also continue to send that to, I think we already have sent it to our city councilors who were very supportive with us and our legislative delegation. So all of that is in uh, their hands. Also in your hands uh, for our charter is we did uh, file the complaint also on Monday on, and that is on the waiver. So at this point here, um, you know, the vote will happen um, in February. We had representation at, at every single hearing throughout the state, not just the hearing that happened here in Brockton on December 8th. We had the hearing uh, in Springfield, we had members there, the hearing in Salem, and the hearing in Fitchburg. We were well represented, and Brockton's <coughs> message is very clear. You know, people tell me, and I wanna make this very clear to the community, um, that when we have a, a new governor who talks about charter schools, we have a new secretary of education uh, in Jim Pizer coming on board, um, and very much have been proponents of charter schools. I am not an opponent of charter schools. I'm not in support of this charter school for many of the reasons that you can certainly read. We've talked about uh, in our rebuttal statement. Um, you know, it, it is not the right time for this charter at this place um, in, in our community. Uh, so again, um, we will continue to go forward. I will update you as we go along uh, on the process. And I also want to let you know that we did receive a draft copy of the NEASC report. You will remember we had the NEASC group here in early October looking at the accreditation of our high school. It gives you an opportunity during this time to take a look at the draft document, to uh, challenge uh, some of the findings or just to provide additional evidence if there are things that need to be uh, cleared. So at this point here, we are presently looking at that document. I think March is when there will be a presentation to the school committee when we have the uh, final document from NEASC and we will do obviously a presentation uh, to the school committee and to the mayor. And um, lastly, I do want to tell you that we um, had uh, Jose Pinheiro retired after over 30 years uh, in the Brockton Public Schools. Um, he has been certainly a wonderful colleague of mine. Um, you know, he's been a director, he's director, directed uh, an office that has grown by leaps and bounds. Um, he's always a gentleman, he positions us well on so many levels for, you know, accountability <coughs> with our bilingual department, <coughs> the many grants that come through that office, and I want to wish him well. There will be a time for him on uh, January 24th, I believe at the Shaw's Center. Many of us are looking forward to, to recognize him in a very appropriate way. And what I want to announce to you is our administrative appointment is uh, Kelly Jones, uh, is our new director of bilingual education. She took over you know, during the vacation. Um, her um, <coughs> job will also be filled now. That's been advertised. So we will uh, certainly welcome her on board. She is somebody that is uh, highly thought of, not only in our Brockton Public Schools, has been here many years, worked in our bilingual department, has been a teacher in our school district but also uh, works with uh, our state level, um, with, with Desi. She is one of the uh, you know, primary teachers of our retail. Uh, she's certainly been on board with us presently with our international school that we're looking at for our innovation school. So I wanna congratulate Kelly and, and wish her well, and I know you'll, you'll join me in that also. Uh, and um, other than uh, our items to refer to subcommittee, that's my report for this evening. Okay, thank you, Superintendent. Um, at this time, are there <coughs> any items that members of the school committee would like to ask us to refer to a specific subcommittee? No? 
Seeing none. Well, I, I, well, oh, okay. I have, um, our next meeting, our school committee meeting is January 20th. I'd like to have the superintendent contract so we can a, at least ad adopt the goals. We, we've made the recommendation during the um, retreat. I'll put those in your packet again this week. And if at that meeting before the school committee meeting, we can just accept the goals. The other one is um, policy. We have an acceptable use policy and we'd like to suggest that meeting for February 3rd. I had some talk today with the executive team about going forward with the policy manual. I've got some suggestions about that, but there are a couple of policies that we'd like to put before you and we will wait until after the first of the year. Policy review, we're talking policy subcommittee. Policy subcommittee. Yes, committee of the whole. Committee of the whole. And that was for so a that. February 3rd date? That was, yep. right. <coughs> that's an open Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> also, we were looking on February 3rd, if we were able to schedule a meeting, we were looking for a curriculum presentation. <coughs> we were talking about the teaching strategies gold and also on our special education. Does that date work, John? Yeah. Want to check? Okay, so February 3rd for both of those subcommittees? Please. Uh -huh. Policy and curriculum. Did you want to start at 6 or 6.30 on that night? I'm not going to tell you. You want to do 6 and 7? Okay. 6? Okay. And that's it. Okay. <coughs> uh, under new business, there was a meeting of the finance subcommittee earlier this evening. Tom, do you want to make a report on the record on that? Or? Um, do we need to accept that tonight, or do you can it go to the next meeting? It can go to the next meeting. Is there? Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. Um, okay. There was a um, meeting at uh, six o'clock of the finance subcommittee. Um, we went over extended day proposed rate increase. We went over substitutes and the different um, line items to go with that, protocols, um, plan going forward, the update on the substitute budget and the school-wide report card. Um, with respect to um, action taken on agenda item one, extended day proposed rate increase, the school committee uh, through the subcommittee, finance subcommittee voted for proposal one which is uh, part of the subcommittee, finance subcommittee packet. Um, so that is the um, consistent, that's the basically the um, minutes of the meeting. So if we could approve those minutes, that so would be great. First accept the report. Yep. Okay, so first we'll accept the motion to accept the report of the finance so subcommittee. Motion is made and properly seconded. All in favor? Okay, so the report has been approved. Now, there's a specific action item you need to vote yes. on? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, so at that meeting, we adopted proposal number one, which uh, is a proposed rate increase with respect to the extended day program. We went with the um, least intrusive one with respect to parents, and the reason why we need to do that is to stay in compliance with the state-required um, financial formula so that we don't lose our ability to provide those services uh, throughout the district. So, um, motion to approve uh, proposal number one, uh, increase of the extended rate program for fiscal year 2015, effective December 1st, 2014. Okay, motion has been made. Is that correct, effective December, 20, December 1st, 2014? Okay, we're so we're looking for the effective date of February 1st? February 1st, February 1st, February 1st effective date, okay. Uh, motion's been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. All right, still on new business. Uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to bring forward on the new business? Mr. Robinson. Um, about, I guess about a year ago now, um, a, a program that serves Brockton students but, but isn't uh, administered by the Brockton Public Schools Blessings in a Backpack came and presented to the school committee. Um, since their presentation, I've kind of been involved a little bit in supporting uh, their continued efforts. Um, they are a program that serves 
some of our neediest students, uh, primarily at the elementary school level, um, with a backpack of food on Fridays um, to help get them um, meals and snacks through the weekend. Um, we have a, a large number of students in our district who qualify for free and reduced to lunch, and uh, many of them get all their meals from our schools, breakfast, lunch, and, and often um, dinner through our extended day program. And, uh, and so this program helps kind of fill that weekend gap. Um, they're currently serving about 60 students um, in two of our elementary schools. Um, the cost is about $80 a student um, for the entire year, that, that during the school year that gets uh, those students um, a meal every weekend for the school year. Um, I've been kind of working with them to try to help them um, serve more students, uh, raise some money to serve the students that they're currently serving. And I'm pleased to say that over the Christmas break, we found out that um, um, Good Samaritan, Stewart Good Samaritan Hospital, um, uh, generously donated out of their community benefits fund uh, $5,500, um, which will pay for the 60 students currently being funded um, to be serviced for the rest of the school year. Um, and and uh, so they're planning on using the, the money that they had already raised um, to potentially either grow the program or start already being able to s plan to serve students next year. Um, and um, Chartwells has also come on board in the, in the last couple weeks and is providing a space here at the high school in their, in their uh, dry storage and cooler space so that they can start to buy in a little bit more bulk, leverage the dollars that they do have to get a little bit more um, to feed those kids. Um, and, and is also going to help support kind of delivery of those Friday meals to the schools in the district. And uh, Signature Hospital, um, on the other side of town, uh, started donating um, cases of fresh fruits um, on about a bi-weekly basis. Um, and so every other week now, um, besides the kind of non-perishable um, goods that, that we can store and guarantee, um, the kids are going to get a, an apple or an orange or a couple grapes or something like that. Um, and so just a lot of really good progress. Kind of wanted to be able to report it. Again, it's not, those aren't donations to Brockton Public Schools. Those are donations to Blessings in a Backpack, which is an independent program um, that serves our students. And certainly anybody who might watch this who's interested in helping support that program further, um, they can feel free to at least start by contacting me and I can let you know how you can make a donation to the, to the Brockton-based program. Uh, right now it's, it's three women. Meg Schoenberg, who's a Brockton graduate, um, doesn't live here in the community anymore, um, but her sister is a teacher at the Kennedy School, and her mom, I believe, is a substitute in our district, her mom is a and, long -time and, and is a longtime uh, retired teacher. Right. Um, the three of them basically grocery shop every single week um, and um, package these um, little meals up for kids and bring them to our district. And with some of the resources that we've been able to leverage within the district, we were able to centralize that program, make it a little easier for them to serve um, our, our neediest kids, and so um, it's, it's slow but sure, um, but some really good things in the last couple of weeks that I just kind of wanted to be able to share with our committee and, and um, in the community at large, so. Which, which schools are participating right now? Uh, right now it's the Barrett Russell and uh, the Kennedy School. Okay. Um, and kids that are part of the program are referred um, generally by like the principal or the guidance counselor at the school who mm -hmm. may recognize a need because of yeah other needs that are being serviced by the school. Yeah. Um, it, families have the opportunity to opt in and opt out. Um, on a weekly basis, there's families opting out because they no longer have the need, um, and, and, other, and new families opting in yeah. all the time. So, um, but, but there's a good core of about 60 kids being served on a weekly basis right now. Yeah. That's great. And we we'll certainly want to thank uh, John Jurisic, the CEO over there, and uh, Steward Medical Good Samaritan. That's a very generous contribution. Yeah, great stuff. Anything else under new business? Seeing, oh, okay. I'd like uh, the superintendent to congratulate Kelly Jones. She does a fantastic job, um, very energetic, very professional, and um, I think she w she's the perfect fit for that position. Um, I have had the um, pleasure of working with her on uh, a project and um, have a lot of faith in her and uh, think she'll do great. A great plus for the district, and sad to see Mr. Pinheiro go, as he's also been a, um, um, a a positive fixture for a lot of students in that department. So, okay. Anyone else? Okay. If there's no more new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn.
Motion to adjourn. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.